Good morning students. Welcome in history classes. Today we are going to discuss 10th class history. Today we are going to discuss first chapter the first war of independence or revolt of 1857. In this chapter we will discuss political causes and in this we are going to discuss British policy of expansion, doctrine of lapse, disrespect shown to Bahadur Shah Zafar, annexation of Awadh, treatment given to Rani Lakshmi Bai, and absentee of subordinates of Britishers. Let's start with first topic, policy of expansion. Policy of expansion means Britishers started to expand their territories by different means. In this, outright wars were there, which they started in, Jan, uh, in June 1757. With this, they have used subsidy lances, doctrine of lapse, policy of protest, and uh, policy of allied misrule. All these things they have used. So the first topic is outright wars. In this uh, method, they have fought different wars with Indian princely states and captured those states in East India Company. First war they have fought that was Anglo Mysur War, which was held in seventeen sixty seven. and they have captured that masur state afterwards they went for anglo maratha war in 18 uh, 17 or 18 18 they have ended the peshwas rule from entire india and afterwards they went for anglo sikh war and in this way they have ended uh, they have ended the sikh uh, rule also from india and after capturing these states they went to myanmar they went uh, assam and captured near about most of the india remaining few territories which they have captured by subsidy lines so let's go for subsidy lines this was introduced by lord wellesley and the main motive of this alliance was to capture the princely states they were giving the offer to the british uh, to indian princely states that if you are willing to uh, save your state from other uh, enemies in natives then you can join this alliance so they offered many uh, temptation to that princely states for saving their territory so let's go for the terms and condition of subsidy lines for the princely states first important matter was there that all that princely states have to accept britishers as the supreme power and for this they should have one uh, resident in their state uh, or headquarter and any decision uh, cannot be taken by that state without consulting the european ambassador who will continually staying in their state and with this uh, they have also uh, accepted that uh, foreign relations of the state will be in the hand of east india company they cannot have interference in that uh, foreign affairs or foreign matters either export import any kind of matter or decision will not be taken by princely states it will be taken by east india company only and uh, with this they have to uh, accept that british troops in their state on their own cost means they have to maintain the british troops and they have to expand on that one and finally uh, all these things were introduced by uh, britishers or east india company uh, by this that uh, rulers have lost their morals or independence and uh, whenever they realize that one they turn again the britishers and that was the political one of the political cause of war of 1857 go for another one that is doctrine of lapse it was introduced by governor general of india lord dalhousie and according to this he was willing to capture the states which were not having the natural heir or not having that son or uh, adopted son was not allowed to hand over that uh, rule of that particular king so let's go for the statement according to doctrine of lapse if an indian ruler died without an male heir his kingdom will lapse that is without that uh, that is it would be uh, come under the company's territory in india so the first state which came under this uh, procedure in the east india company that was that was jhansi because that uh, king of jhansi was not having any uh, natural heir but he had adopted a son but british uh, britishers or east india company denied that uh, it is not the natural heir so we are not going to transfer the power to you so that's why uh, they uh, given the title 
and that pension to the Rai Lakshmi Bai, and they didn't accept Rai Lakshmi Bai as the Queen of Jhansi. But uh, Queen of Jhansi, Mani Karnika, or Rani Lakshmi Bai was not willing to uh, accept these terms and condition. So she was having the revolt. First, this uh, Jhansi was having the revolt against Britishers, but afterwards, the death of uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai, they have captured Satara, Sambalpur, Udaipur, and Nagpur also. So, after the death of uh, King of Jhansi, that uh, territory was captured by Britishers when uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai fought against the Britishers, but she could not save uh, that kingdom. And that kingdom also lapsed in East India Company. And afterwards, they have uh, captured many territories like Jaitpur, uh, Jaitpur, Nagpur. You have read already well. Now, we are going to discuss the next topic that is policy of pretext. So, we are going to discuss the next topic pretext of allayed misrule. So, this was introduced by Lord Alhaji. And under this rule, they have captured or annexed Avad. So, what was this rule? According to this, if any king is not able to govern properly according to East India Company, then they can capture that particular state. So, Avad was the first state which was captured through this rule. So, they have uh, blamed uh, Nawab of Avad that uh, you cannot govern properly or you are not able to uh, have the proper administration. So, that's why uh, they have captured in humiliating way or uh, uh, they were not... Uh, uh, willing to continue that Nawab of Awadh and that's why they captured according to that uh, rule that is pretext of allied misrule. But after this that uh, common people were went uh, against that uh, Britishers and that uh, huge masses uh, came in favor of Nawab of Awadh. So we'll discuss how it happened. So they have uh, started to uh, impose higher taxes on food and houses and uh, which was not uh, willing to paid by that ruling state. So uh, they denied to pay and that's why that East India Company turned against the uh, particular state which they, uh, where they have applied policy of allied, mis uh, allied misrule. And uh, one more thing was there that uh, they have uh, confiscated that states and talukas or jamidars and uh, deposited the talukas, uh, talukdars uh, because they were willing to uh, establish their own rule and they want to appoint their own persons and that's why they removed which were working before and with this uh, near about 75,000 soldiers which were there in the army of uh, Nawab of Awadh were terminated by East India Company and they became jobless and uh, the recent came in the mind of these soldiers and uh, with that that uh, many persons nobles officials uh, which were then administration of uh, Nawab of Awad, they also turned against the Britishers and all these together turned against the Britishers and they uh, supported the revolt of 1857. Now we are going to discuss the second cause of uh, first uh, war of independence and the political causes that is disrespect shown to Bahadur Shah Jafar. So Bahadur Shah Jafar was the Mughal king and he was having the authority and title of king and that uh, coins were minted by that name of Bahadur Shah Jafar. But in 1849, Lord Alhaji announced that successor of Bahadur Shah Jafar would not be permitted to use the Red Fort or the title and uh, whatever that facilities were given to that uh, king uh, family will not be given further because the titles were abolished. And uh, his successor was there in uh, Red Fort and they uh, threw them out and said that uh, you have to transfer from this place to another place. Means near that uh, Kutub Minar they have given one place uh, which was not acceptable by that uh, followers of Badu Shah Jafar and Muslims turned against especially because uh, they were having the faith in Bahadur Shah and uh, that's why that uh, most of the Muslims turned against uh, Britishers. Not only that royal family, but also that common people also went against this uh, decision because his uh, their king was being uh, uh, thrown away from that uh, royal palace and uh, shifted on another place and their uh, titles has been abolished. Now they will not consider the king. So this was a, a huge threat for uh, royal family and their followers. So they turned against the Britishers. So let's start with another topic, treatment given to Nana Saheb. So let me explain who was Nana Sahib. 
he was the adopted son of Balaji Baji Rao II and he was the last Peshwa ruler. But Britishers refused to give the title and the facilities as a king because he was the adopted son. So they didn't accept Baji Rao. Uh, they didn't accept Nana Sahib as the king, and uh, that's why they have uh, turned out he and his family from that royal palace. And uh, with the wealth uh, and his family, he was traveling between uh, Lucknow and Delhi, and he uh, get the support of the people like in the Britishers. and he played very important role in the first war of independence to maintain the mind of uh, indians turning against the britishers last topic we are going to discuss absentee sovereignty of britishers so uh, what is meant by absentee sovereignty means britishers were not aware about the sovereignty of indians or they are not awareing they are not having awareness about the topics which indians were facing so indians were having the problems uh, but it was unknown to the britishers because in britain the conditions was better than india so uh, they were not having any uh, emotional uh, relationship with indians they were uh, simply uh, cruel towards indians uh, while uh, they were uh, collecting the taxes uh, revenue they were very cruel and action was taken against that uh, peasants and uh, their uh, behavior was rude against indians because they were not having the emotional uh, touch or they were not uh, considering that india as the motherland they were uh, here only for earning and east india company's main motive was there to get profit from india not to uh, do something for india so that's why whatever that uh, task was done by um, east india company that uh, most of them were against indians and that's why indian turned against britishers because uh, britishers were not having any kind of uh, feeling or any kind of uh, emotional touch with indians so these were the causes political causes which were responsible for first war of independence will uh, hear again that consequences of uh, first war of independence in the next video